If you're someone who watches this kind of videos, you probably heard about all the ambitious plans to move to Mars and eventually become multiplanetary species. But how realistic this plan is? Or is it what humanity needs at the moment? I'm not going to talk about things we can do to make our blue planet a better place. But about why moving to the red planet isn't a very good idea. Here are the eight reasons not to move to Mars. Probably the main problem would be the lack of water. Even though there are promising amount of ice on Mars, much of it remains concealed under the deep layers of the Martian rocks and the sand dunes. The technology to get this vital resource is still not developed, especially to perform on a different environment. Also, the Martian water reserves are tainted with toxic minerals and salt content that far surpasses terrestrial ocean water. These noxious salts, known as perchlorates, pose a significant health hazard to humans. If you think we can try the method we use on ISS, recycling the urine, this has its own hardships. As the astronaut Douglas Wheelock put it, this would mean that today's coffee is tomorrow's coffee. But Mars is different than the International Space Station. ISS is much closer to Earth, and even with all the recycling efforts, resupplies are essential and possible. However, taking large quantities of water to another planet can be a big challenge. The need to transport substantial amount of water to the Red Planet is essential not only for human consumption, but also for producing the breathable air. On ISS oxygen is obtained from water, a process called electrolysis, split the oxygen from the hydrogen, and that's how astronauts get enough air to breathe. But when it comes to Mars, water, with its considerable weight, becomes a huge payload, and lack of water causes the lack of two most essential components of life for humans water and oxygen. The second challenge is definitely the long distance. The window for launching spacecraft to Mars within a six-month time frame is a rare opportunity that happens once every 27 months. And it doesn't only make it harder to send supplies to the astronauts, but makes space travel a very challenging task. Mars is already a hell for humans with its lack of water, oxygen, and gravity. But spending about six months in a spacecraft with zero gravity and extremely short supplies is definitely not for everyone. The distance is a problem in terms of payload since astronauts will not only need food, water, etc. for surviving on Mars, but they also need those things for surviving the long journey to Mars. You can already imagine a budget of billions of dollars that would be needed for an advanced spacecraft. All the fuel and tremendous amount of luggage. Another concern regarding the distance is that if there was any technical or medical problem, no help would be available. And in an environment that is not originally for humans, anything can happen. Obviously, astronauts are all trained for harsh conditions and any unexpected event, but you can't always guess what's going to happen in a place you're going to for the first time. So, we reached the Mars after a painstakingly long journey, but now what? There might be food supplies waiting for us that were brought here before we came, and there's probably a place to stay and do research, but it's cold. And because of radiation, and those harsh solar winds, it's not recommended to stay outside for a long time. Oh look, a sandstorm! What an amazing welcome the Red Planet gives to us. So let's plant whatever the flag we brought and get the fuck out of this hellhole. Unless we can't, because we need to wait for about two years to go back home. Then let's do some scientific research. Well, tons of rovers and robots were already doing the job. The only reason you are on Mars is probably because of politics. I mean, someone needs to win the election, right? But you still went to Mars. Because, well, someone had to and we have to start from somewhere. Moscow wasn't built in a day. Oh boy, we're not in the right time for this saying. Uh -oh. Whatever. We need to figure this planet out. And we need to make it better for future generations. And believe me, there are so many things that need to be improved. Okay, we can build bigger domes, look into different ways of supplying people who live here, and make better spacesuits to protect us. But what about the things we can't do anything about? Well, that list is too long, but let's take a look at gravity for now. Life in our lovely planet has evolved around gravitational field. Our terrestrial existence is profoundly influenced by the ceaseless tug of gravity. This omnipresent force has sculpted our muscles and bones, defining our very physical essence. And the absence of it is no small problem. In low gravity conditions, such as those encountered during experiments on mice, the swift atrophy of leg muscles within a mere nine days can make it harder to sustain a healthy life. Yet the challenges do not end with muscle degradation. Our skeletal structure can go worse. 
At a microscopic level, our bones are a marvel of complexity and diversity. Deprived of the gravitational force we've evolved under, they succumb to the affliction known as spaceflight-induced osteoporosis. The skeletal system, housing nearly 100% of our body's calcium stores, undergoes a dramatic withering, releasing calcium into the cardiovascular system, sowing chaos that manifests as constipation, renal stones, and bouts of severe depression. But the cascade of maladies doesn't cease with the musculoskeletal system. The human heart, a mighty muscle itself, gets weaker in the absence of gravity, growing deconditioned and unprepared. While research about supplements show promise for maintaining healthy muscles in Martian settlers, we are still not sure what else can happen on a long run, especially if we are planning to move there. So we talked about water shortages we can experience in our new home, but what about the food? For how long can we live on canned food? We need some fresh veggies. Are you thinking about planting vegetables on the Martian soil? Well, toxic chemicals in those soils aren't thinking the same. We always talk about the health benefits of salt and how essential it is for human body. Yeah, tell it to the salts from Mars that are constantly trying to kill you. Even if we somehow manage to clean the Martian soil from that toxic relationship it has with salt, there's still not enough nutrition there to grow a plant. On top of loads and loads of supplies we are supposed to bring, we might need to take some precious earth soil with us too. And that's not even all. Sun won't be on our side either. So we will need some artificial UV lights, because it's too cold there. Okay, let's imagine for a second that we made it to Mars successfully, and remember, we have to make it successfully for someone to boast, and overcame all the obstacles somehow. Do you think you can live in a closed place all the fucking time? No fresh air, no going to the beach to watch the sunset, no jogging in the morning, and no barbecue time with friends. At least, not outside. Everything you need will be in the tunnels and domes that are connected to each other. Can humans really live like this? Do we really want to move to a planet that is constantly trying to kill us? I mean, why are we even trying to move to Mars? Because something can happen to Earth and make it uninhabitable? You mean, more uninhabitable than Mars? Because when you think about it, the only similarity Earth and Mars have is that both of them are rock planets. I'm not gonna mention the toxic water Mars has, don't wait for it, but that's it. It kinda existing in the habitable zone of the solar system doesn't make it habitable for us. But if you're still okay with all of this and wanna go to Mars so badly, then let's discuss the seventh reason, spacesuits. If you think you can wander around with a spacesuit all the goddamn time, I should tell you that after a while, it will tire you out. Going for an expedition and wearing a special suit is one thing. But if we are considering to move there, living in a dome all the time and wearing a suit, even if we are stepping outside for a second, doesn't sound very exciting. With a weak atmosphere the planet has, all the solar radiation and cosmic rays will follow your every step and try to get you at the first opportunity. So, now that you're on Earth, enjoy the presence of the atmosphere and the magnetic field. If you still decide to go, let me tell you about the last but most important reason why it's a terrible idea. You will be lonely. The journey of settlers to Mars promises a unique kind of isolation. You can think that being lonely is a thing we feel on Earth as well. But the Earth, with its embrace, has no bad intentions against us. In contrast, Mars has evil plans on the human spirit, creating a volatile crucible of isolation and profound psychological burdens. Colonists will face the stark reality of being cut off from everyone but their fellow crew members. The vast chasm that separates the red planet from Earth imposes a 10-minute delay on long-distance connections. This isolation carves a path to mental illness for those desired to be permanent residents of the Martian frontier. If you still think you can bear it, studies say it's the otherwise. Researchers suggest that hues of depression, insomnia, anxiety, fatigue, boredom, and emotional instability can happen as a result of long isolation. Even the most well-trained professional astronauts remain vulnerable to these side effects. As humans are naturally curious, we probably won't stop trying to go and touch other celestial objects. Even if it's not now, one day we probably will build those colonies on Mars. But it seems that we need more time to research the Martian environment thoroughly, because the last thing we want is to face with an unexpected surprise there. What do you think about this grand plan of moving to another planet? Does it excite or scare you? That'd be interesting to hear your thoughts.